Hello everyone, this is Roland, welcome. Today I, I want to talk about um, hypnosis again. It's what I've been talking about a lot lately. I may read some uh, of Madame Guyon's book, A Short and Very Easy Method of Prayer, but I want to begin by talking about hypnosis. Um, I want you to, to, to see, look, we all know that, I'm sure you've seen, if you haven't seen, you can go to YouTube to watch um, some stage presentations. I think those are good. There's, there are a couple of, um, of uh, excellent uh, hypnotists that do a nice job, and they don't degrade the people. It's all fun. It's in very good taste, especially in the, uh, the one that does it in a corporate setting. And they'll, they'll bring about maybe six, eight, ten people up to the stage, sitting lined up in chairs, and then they, uh, they, they are hypnotized, and then they do various um, things under the, under the direction of the hypnotist, okay? But it would be good if you have ne never seen anything. You should, I encourage you to go to YouTube. It's fun, okay, to, to watch. It's amazing, really. But your eyes will be opened if you haven't seen it before. And even if you have seen it before, you should see it again in light of my recent discussions. Um, you will see, for example, uh, see, you, it, it's, it's actually the power of folly, hypnosis. It's the power of folly. To see what's not there or to not see what's there to believe what's not true or not to believe what is true, to smell what it doesn't exist, to see something, see, it, it, it's, uh, for example, you'll see a person on the stage who's hypnotized and the hypnotist says, you know, on the count of five, you'll wake up feeling good and you won't be able to, to find your shoe, he says. Well, he goes one, two, three, four, five, person you know had been had been sitting there with their eyes closed of course they were fully conscious of what was happening around them but their eyes were closed so they opened their eyes and they can't find their shoe he took their shoe off and uh, it's laying there they don't see it and then he puts it in their hand he puts the shoe in their hand and waves the shoe in front of their face like this and they don't see it it's unbelievable another person is hypnotized that the person next to him the hypnotist says has the most terrible smell you've ever smelled. And when the person uh, uh, opens the eyes, then you see the person leaning, leaning away from the person next to him as if that person had a terrible smell. Another person is hypnotized that uh, if it's a lady, let's say her name is Mary, and she's hypnotized that her name is Bob. She, she's told when you wake up, your name is Bob. And when, then he asks her what her name is, she says, Bob. She keeps saying Bob. One lady was even very adamant. I saw one presentation where she said, Bob, she yelled at him when he kept asking her, my name is Bob. Well, then someone in the, then he says, well, pick someone in the audience who knows you very, very well. She said, well, you know, Jane over there knows me very well. And then the hypnotist says to Jane, who's in the audience, Jane, would you please tell um, this person here what, her real name is and the person says Mary and uh, the person on the stage says you says to, to, to Jane you don't even you don't even know my name see well there's a lot of things like that one person is hypnotized or stuck to the floor and then another interesting one and this is one I'm going to focus on to today and for today's discussion because a lot of you have physical symptoms um, um, he, uh, the hypnotist hypnotizes them that they're going to be very cold. And then you see them shivering. And he hypnotizes them that they're going to be hot. And then you, it's very, very hot. They're in the desert. It's hot. It's hot. And then you see them sweating. Hot. So not only does he, does the hypnosis affect the mind, but it actually affects body processes. Okay. So now, let's, let's, let me give you a little bit of backdrop to all of this. 
So you say, well, that's interesting. It's on stage, but that's what that's what it happens to everyone that you see all around you is in some level of trance, most of the time, maybe all the time. And why? How, why? Because you see them reacting. You see them controlled by the outside. The person on a stage, their thoughts, what they see, what they don't see, what they're paying attention to, how they feel is controlled by the, the hypnotist. In other words, by the environment. In this case, the, the dominating aspect of the environment is the hypnotist and his or her voice, okay? Well, be, in life, you, you have reacted and responded to many different people and things, okay? And so now, you, and when I say you, I mean everyone, you go out in the world and your feelings are controlled by the environment. See, if someone if someone is doesn't smile at you or doesn't or says something mean to you, then you get upset, you get angry, you get hurt. You see how they're control how you're controlled. If it's a rainy day and then you you feel down just because it's a rainy day, so the rainy day is controlling your your emotions. See, your team wins, you yell and scream. That is controlling your emotions. If your team loses and you feel bad, you see how everything controls your emotions. And you're very dependent on the environment being in a certain nice way. And if it's not nice, then you feel then you feel bad or hurt or unhappy or something. And so you, you need approval from other people. You need their approval, their reassurance. If they don't give it to you, then you feel bad. The point I'm getting at is everything. So how about now when you go out and, and something upsets you that gives you a tummy ache or a headache? See? One person, because of their reactions at work, especially resentment, upset and resentment, they resented their work, resented the people there. They, got, they felt sick when they thought of going to work. They actually felt physically sick. So um, every little thing, does a barking dog irritate you? If it does, then that's stimulus. See, you, you, you're all familiar with if a person thinks of a lemon, then they will begin to, your mouth gets a little bit moist. If you think, if you imagine a lemon, then you, you, you'll begin to salivate a little bit. See how the idea, see, causes the uh, salivation, okay? Well, if you hear the sound of a barking dog, does it irritate you? How about a motor loud motorcycle? How about the sound of someone's voice that irritates you? Does it irritate you? Do you feel your body reacting? Do you feel yourself tensing up? Does traffic make you tense up? Does the traffic jam make you, ups make you upset? Do you become impatient? Do you see how you are controlled by the outside? That is not good. It's it's okay for animals. Animals are meant to be controlled by the outside. A animals have instinct, okay, which is an internal guidance mechanism that God gives them, and then they're controlled by the outside, they're, by their environment, completely. But human beings were not meant to be controlled by the environment. We were meant to respond and obey inner principle. See, what is right? What is true, what is fair, what is just. See, we're supposed to respond to an invisible inner, inner um, principle, which is known as which is known as what you know in your heart. What you know is right in your heart. That's what we're supposed to respond to, and the inner light from God. Humans have an inner. There's an inner light from God. That's the true environment. That's the environment for your soul for your mind, for your body. Sure, we, you have a body that goes out into the world and you move from point A to point B and you, you see things and hear things. You should go through life as an observer, just as an observer. You know, you remember when you were a child or maybe a young person, do you remember when you would go on like vacation? Remember, you would see many interesting things and fun things and buildings and different places and people beautiful lakes and all the scenery and you you just observed it all 
you didn't react to it, you observed it, okay? Or when you were a little child and you went somewhere with your, perhaps your mommy or your mommy and daddy, and maybe daddy was driving and mommy and daddy were sitting in the front seat and you were in the back seat, and they were talking and you weren't really paying attention to what they were talking about. You looked out the window and you saw the scenery go by and the people and cars and buildings and wonderful things to see. You saw all those things and you observed, you watched them. You were the observer. That's the way you need to be in life as an observer. A little bit distant. See, a little bit of a distant feeling. See, Madame Guyon, Madame Jean Guyon, spiritual lady, who found the presence of God. And uh, let's say someone like um, Miguel Molinos is another example. Okay, they talked a lot about, or uh, François Finlon. They talked a lot about um, about uh, recoll about recollecting oneself, and by recollecting, they meant to draw within to draw back a little bit so you're closer to the to to the to the inner closer to god closer to the inner light closer to conscience closer to in, internal guidance okay and and the outside is a little bit more it's a little distant so you see it you see the things happening but it doesn't affect you you maybe you feel the pressure Sometimes from the outside comes pressure from people. You sense the pressure, okay? But it doesn't penetrate. See, the way you became hypnotized when you were a child, the way you became upset, emotionalized, hurt, traumatized, see, converted, outer became, well, you became outer directed, was through outside pressure. Parental pressure, see church pressure dr drug pressure uh, school pressure academic pressure sports pressure peer pressure pr see achievement pressure just pressure and it got to you and it penetrated see and then you began to react to it so thereafter anyone that pressured you or, see, or you seemed to pressure you, or resembled those who pressured you, or things that were in the scene when you were pressured, then it, then it affects you. See? So everything affects you. See? You say you like this and you don't like that. Or you hate this and you hate that. And this place you can't stand and that place you really like and so on. You see, it's all just em emotions. And where do those emotions come from? They came from outside they're stimulated by the outside the outside is actually directing your the processes of your body so now you see why it would be good to find what um, madame guyon found so you could be in the world christ what he he said to be in the world but not of the world see he said we're told to overcome evil with good and and, and he said resent not, he said resist not evil Resist not evil. In other words, don't react to evil. Don't resent the evil. Don't get entangled with it. Don't get pulled into an argument with it. Don't resent it. Don't be irritated by it. Just stand back and obs observe it. Stare at it. Whether it's on the outside or whether it is in your mind up to something, some images, just stare at it. But the focus right now is how... how just how sensitive and how reactive you are. You have no idea how things affect your, you. Not only your moods, your emotions, but your very body processes. Okay. So it would be, behoove you to learn from Madame Guyon. And you are very fortunate because you also have um, me to help to explain what Madame Guyot was trying to tell us in her wonderful little book. See, so, um, uh, and, and you have the meditation, which I offer. I have fr free, I may, I've made it free. I have several meditations, they're all excellent. Some of them are more elaborate, they're just excellent. And they have a book, books with them and everything. Highly recommended, okay? But you can start with the free one. 
Start with a free meditation. You can learn it in six minutes. It teaches you how to stand back, how to recollect yourself, as Madame Guyot referred to it as, or Miguel Molinos, or Francois Fenlon, and I'm sure St. John of the Cross, or Teresa of Avila, or um, Thomas of Kempis, or Brother Lawrence, or any of these people. I'm sure they would agree with re recollecting oneself, pulling back. Okay? Not, not retreating from the world. Not, it doesn't mean retreating from the world. It doesn't mean going into a shell. See, what it means is, as Christ said, to be in the world, but not of the world. So me, see, I go out. Uh, see, I have a family. We talk. We do things. I have work. I talk to people. I go places. I have recreation and work. And see, just to do everything as a husband, as a, as a dad, as a, as a teacher, okay, as a, and recreation, okay, so we do, I do all these things, but I just, I don't get too, so much into them, not so deeply into them, see, not emotionally involved, I just, I, I, I move li uh, lightly, see, with a light touch, I, I, I go through the world delicately. I'm in the world, but not of the world. And if something gets to me, if something irritates me a little bit or upsets me a little bit, then I, then I have to look at that. Okay, then it's back to the drawing board. Let's say something did get to me. This is, this is good for you to hear this. Let's say I went out and something irritated me. Okay, well, I immediately see that it's not good to be irritated. I shouldn't be becoming irritated. I should remain calm. If, I, if there's something I need to, to say, then I should say it. If something to do, I should do it. If nothing's to be said or done, then not, don't do anything or say anything. But, there's no, but being irritated doesn't help anything. What good does that do? It doesn't help at all. See? So then I, I see that. So I see it's a weakness. So I look at it. I, I observe it in the light. I stand back. In my, I stand back and I observe my own error. Okay, I see it. I don't try to do anything about it. I just see it. Okay. And if I get, if I were to get rather upset. Okay. Um, then, what would I do? Well, then I would have. Then there would be some sequelae or some aftermath from being upset. Right, I'd probably my tummy would be a little, I'd be a little tight and a little tense, and then I would have the a memory of it in my mind. See, that's part of the hypnosis. That's a great part of it, which I've been talking about in the last few vi videos about the imagination, the images in the mind. So then, the image image of that see of that scene, that trauma scene actually, it's a trauma, a little trauma when we get upset, of that failure, failure to be patient. Failure to observe calmly, see? So it's a failure on my part. So it sticks in my craw a little bit and then there'll be a memory formed. And it's okay, so then I, I observe the memory. But I also have to observe how that memory tends to keep coming back. See, the memory tends to keep coming back. So I have to just observe it. Don't do anything about it. Don't indulge it. Don't resent it. Just observe it. See, until it begins to fade. So it, it's, a, it's a little bit uncomfortable to, have, to see that I failed, to have the memory of the failing, to see the, have to see the emotions of the failing, okay? Well, then it diminishes and it goes away. But ha having observed it in the light, see, there's something about observing um, our error in the light that is, uh, that is good. And thereby, I will, I will change. The day will come, the day will come when the same thing will occur and this time no reaction. See, I will have changed, mysteriously I will have changed, no reaction, no upset, I just observe it calmly. See, so it's a growing, pro it's a perfecting process, okay? Well, all right, so um, I think I've, 
covered quite a bit of ground today. I hope it's, uh, I think it'll be of help to some of you. Okay. In fact, I know it will. Um, so uh, I'll make a, an end to this video. I didn't get around to reading from Madame, the second chapter of Madame Guyon's um, book today, A Short and Very Easy Method of Prayer. Uh, maybe I'll do so uh, on the next video. But this was very good. I mean, you can go find Madame Guyot's book yourself and re read, read it or re look at the second chapter in light of what I have just said. Okay? My name is Roland.